gentlemen, welcome back. How's it going? I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Today, we're going to take a look at how to download the settings from an SEL relay, as well as some other really common things like uh, pulling event records and uh, serial event recorder, things like that. Um, I know, like last week, I made a little list of uh, all the videos that I was going to post, and I'm already off schedule on that. Sue me. Tell me, tell me how much I suck down in the comments. YouTube loves the interaction. Anyway, I, I had a request. One of my friends uh, asked me if I could make this video for him. So I'm like, sure. Yeah, he's doing a job block. Just need to pull a bunch of settings. Doesn't need a 45-minute tutorial on all of the amazing features of the Accelerator software, which that's a video I will make in the future. And if that's something you want, whenever I post it, I will link it down in the description. I'll put a card up or whatever. Um, today, we're just looking at the... Uh, basic functions, the stuff that everyone's going to need to know about Accelerator. Um, to start off, if you're going to pull settings from a relay, you're going to need really th three things, maybe four things. Um, I would recommend the SEL C662 cable. I have the, uh, the older one. It looks like this. If you buy one nowadays, uh, it'll look like the one that I've got up on screen right now. Um, the reason I recommend it, it always works with Accelerator. It like, detects automatically. It makes life really, really easy. I've never had an issue with it. I've had the same one in my bag for like six or seven years now, and I've never had any issues with it. I have had issues with some um, just generic RS-232 cables in the past, but I know some people aren't going to want to spend $100 of their own money on a cable. Go ahead and get the 15 foot one if you're uh, buying the C662. It makes life a lot easier. You can sit at a bench and you know have a relay plugged up somewhere way up high in a you know in a in a relay rack and you don't have to worry about it as much. Um, so definitely recommend the C662. The other option, the other thing that you can make work um, is a regular USB to RS-232 adapter. Make sure you get one with the FTDI chip. I don't actually know what that means. I just know that it works. Um, I wouldn't go with one of those super dirt cheap ones you can get on Ally Express for like 45 cents. Uh, buy one like this. I know for a fact this StarTech one uh, for 26 bucks on Amazon. This one works fine. I will have a link down below. If you're going to be doing a bunch of this, if you're going to be a relay guy or, you know, pulling settings every other week or you can swipe the company card and it doesn't really matter to you, go ahead and get the uh, SEL C662. It makes life just so much easier. Just go and get that one. Um, if you do get a generic cable, uh, you will also need a DB9 null modem adapter. What this does is it swaps the send and the receive pin on the port. So uh, SEL specifically, like they use DCE, whereas most things use DTE. Serial connections are weird. It, it you know, the DB9 and the RS-232. Uh, DB9 is the shape of the connector, by the way. It's just that nine pin connector. RS-232 is the uh, serial communications protocol. So RS-232 came out in the 60s. It predates USB by like almost 40 years. I think uh, USB came out in 96. So. Uh, it's very simple. You have to have the right send and transmit things on the right send and transmit pins. And uh, some of them, some of the time it's backwards. I think SEL is the one that's backwards. The port on this is DCE, whereas most things are DTE. I don't know, I'm not an expert on it. If you try and plug it in and it doesn't work, plug in a null modem cable, try it again. Um, you're not gonna hurt anything by having the wrong having it be null modem and it's supposed to be non-null modem DC and DT. It's, it's not going to blow anything up, but it won't communicate if the send and the receive pin are swapped. So you will need a RS-232 to uh, null modem adapter to connect to an SEL-751. Obviously, you don't have to mess with that if you have a C662. One cool feature of these guys is on the C662 cable, if you get it wrong, it does have a little dip switch right here. The next thing that you're going to need is the Accelerator software. So we're going to need to download this software, and I actually just uninstalled my version of it so that I can walk you through the download. It goes fairly quick. You do need to have a SEL Inc. account. You have to have a login for it. If you have like a company email, like you're at a at shermco.com email, usually it only takes like 24 hours to get your account activated. Um, makes it really easy. 
you do have to log in with an account in order to have that download button uh, appear. So we're gonna go ahead and download that. So this is, uh, they call it, just the product code for is SEL 5030. That is the install for the um, accelerator software. So that's the software that we're actually gonna use to talk to the relay with. I don't know why I uninstalled that. I probably could have skipped that. So we're gonna download this big giant file. So that's that's another point. Um, this is a 1.2 gigabyte file. This isn't something you wanna do out in the field. If you know you're gonna be working on relays, you know you're gonna be working on Schweitzers, uh, go ahead and get this ahead of time, get it all set up, get it all dialed in ahead of time, makes life a little bit easier. All right, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to install uh, Accelerator. So we're gonna double click on setup here. Setup.exe, the one that just finished downloading. It's a big giant file. You may need uh, admin privilege on your computer if you uh, if you don't have that. Oh yeah, on this you do actually have to set a password. I'm not 100% sure why. Um, this is it. You're gonna see a couple different um, like program shortcuts come up on your desktop as you install this. Uh, one of them is gonna be Accelerator, which is obviously like the software as we use it. And then you're also gonna get Compass, SEL Compass. Um, that's sort of like their like software automatic update tool thing. I don't know, it, it it's more complicated than it's really worth. I, I tend to do things manually and don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, so if you've got like driver updates or you need multiple language packs, like you need to download the software in Italian, you're gonna do it through Accelerator, or sorry, through Compass. Okay, so this is asking us to install a bunch of drivers. Um, this is just so we can connect to some different relays. Um, and then I think one of these should be our USB driver, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna click okay for all those. Um, while you're doing this, make sure that you're not connected to an SEL relay. Make sure that you're not connected to your C662 cable. You just got it unplugged. Um, and it should run through and install everything. I will show you how to fix it in case uh, something gets messed up, specifically our USB driver, because a lot of people have issues um, not being able to get the USB driver working right off the bat. Um, and this goes for both the C662 and the uh, sort of generic ones. I'm gonna show you how to do, uh, I'm gonna show you how to fix it regardless of whether you got the C662 or the, uh, the generic one. All right, so here we are. Uh, it has finished installing all of our drivers, which is good. Um, obviously, here's a handful of things that they don't think are necessary, but you can download if you need them. So they got the old driver language files, so you can pick different uh, languages for these. I don't, I don't know, I leave these unchecked and just hit okay and it goes away and then we're done. Um, so it says, cool, SEL installation uh, completed successfully. Excellent, so we're gonna need to go to Accelerator, and I am going to, so it's important to note, it installed a handful of things, right? So if we go to the file location where this is saved, um, in our start menu, it, it added a bunch of things, right? We're gonna ignore most of these things. <laughs> uh, Compass is where you would go. Like I said, you can get other drivers and it, can you set it up to do automatic updates and stuff like that. I, don't, I never use it. Don't worry about it. Uh, SEL Syncer Wave. We're going to use this when we go check out um, event record files. So that's important. Keep that in mind. Uh, just know that it installed automatically. You do need a license. You have to. It's a paid service for some of the more advanced features. Be aware of that. You can use most of the basic features and see like some basic oscillographies and some time, uh, you know, timed stuff that the relay records um, for free, which is really cool. Uh, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the uh, accelerator quick set. I'm going to put this on my desktop because I need it all the time. We're going to open this bad boy up, and voila! Here is our beautiful accelerator quick set software. All SEL relays uh, do use Accelerator Quick Set to pull the settings down now, year of our Lord 2024. So, plug in my C662 cable and we'll get it fired up on the bench and we'll connect to it. 
Okay, so once it's connected, one thing that I always like to do is I like to make sure that my uh, cable is being read by my computer correctly, just saves the troubleshooting step further down, and I can already tell you it hasn't. Um, so we've got this guy right here, COM port one. If I unplug my cable, my serial cable, okay, so before before I do anything, I've got COM port one and COM port nine already populated. So those are already things that I'm using on my computer. When I plug this in, if everything was set up already, and I, I think you can do this through Compass, I feel like sometimes it does it automatically. I uninstalled mine and then just reinstalled it, so it might have been the fact. Anyway, what we're gonna do to fix this, and one thing that I would recommend you do before you go out in the field, is just go ahead and install the driver for um, the C662 cable. So we're gonna go back to this page, the C662 page. Uh, we're gonna go support. We're gonna scroll down, and if you're logged in, you should just have a download button. So for Windows 11, I'm on Windows 11. If you're on Windows 10, whatever, pick whatever one you got. We're gonna go ahead and download this driver and install this separately. So we download that, cool. We go to our downloads folder. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if you have to extract it or not. We're gonna go ahead and extract it. There we go. Bada boom. So here's our folder. And what I like to do and I say I like to do this every single time I do it, I do it this way and it always works. If you get like the install file from SEL and install it that way, still sometimes it doesn't work and I'm not 100% sure why. If we do it this way, it always works. So just follow along. We're, we're gonna look other devices in our device manager, right? So we got that open. Uh, double click on this and we're gonna click update driver Browse my computer. If you do it automatically, it doesn't work. Browse my computer. Uh, we're gonna look in downloads. That's where I have it. Uh, make sure include subfolders is there so like the actual, you don't have to navigate to the actual driver itself. It will find it in our list, right? Because I don't, I don't have a lot of stuff in my downloads folder, but one of them is this folder, which does actually contain the driver somewhere in it. So uh, yeah, so pick that. Check include subfolders, hit next, bada boom. Look at that, SEL CP 210X, whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's it, so that's the driver that we need. And if we can see here, it should pop up right here under com ports, com LPT, uh, sorry, com and LPT uh, as SEL CP 210 USB after we installed that driver. Device will work properly, everything looks good. You actually don't need to worry about this because we're gonna, uh, change those things manually in the program that we're using, it doesn't necessarily matter what it shows up in as device manager, so that's fine. So now that we've got that all squared away, we're gonna click, uh, sorry, on the top ribbon here in quick set, we're gonna click communications, parameters. This is RS-232. It is a serial protocol, so make sure that we are on uh, active connection type, it's gonna be serial. You can do this over uh, ethernet, probably do that in my future video where I talk about all sorts of crazy stuff, but uh, for this one, we're gonna go serial. Uh, that is what we found in our device manager. That was the COM port that we, uh, that it assigned itself in the device manager. And it should tell you, hey, this is the CP2 blah, 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 USB to UART bridge. This one we want. Uh, the SEL virtual communications port, don't use that, doesn't work. That's uh, it's for other, stuff. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, now you can use auto detect, but it's pretty slow. So I generally don't use that. I'm going to show you how I do that real quick. I'm going to get my tripod moved over and I'll show you what I'm doing on the front of the relay on this 751. That's got the LCD, most seven series relays, most three series relays are going to be almost identical to this. We're going to hit escape to into the menu. We're gonna scroll down to, sorry, I've got a weird thing on my screen here. Uh, set show. So you, we see the little cursor, the underlying cursor right there. Um, under set show, so we selected that and we're gonna hit enter to go into our settings menu. Scroll down, scroll down to port. And then 
The first one is port F, but you can see all the ports that this one has. We're gonna select port F because we're on the front port. Most of them are labeled as port F. I think on some of the five series relays, the one on the front is labeled port one. I don't know why. Um, make sure our little scroll thing is under port F. So protocol select, this is important. We're gonna make sure that our protocol is SEL. Hit escape. Uh, our comm setting, so the speed on this one, the communication speed, the baud rate is 19,200. So 19.2, that's good. Scroll down, uh, eight communication bits. Uh, the parity on this one is N for none. And then one stop bit. Again, this is RS-232. So the communications protocol is very old school, very granular. It doesn't do any auto detect stuff that USB does. So um, T out, this is five minutes. So uh, it will log you out of the, uh, it'll log you out of the connection after five minutes of no activity. So it's, Important to know. Um, and then RTS, uh, CTS, I believe that is none, uh, or it, N, and that's fine. So we just got to make sure that all of that stuff goes into our accelerator software. So we'll go back over there. Okay, so we come back over here to our uh, accelerator software. Um, we need to make sure that the settings on our communication parameters tab are the same as we had on our relay. So we're gonna, instead of doing auto detect, it works, but it takes takes forever. Don't worry about it. Uh, our baud rate was uh, 19.2. Data bits is eight, it's almost always eight. One stop bit, no parity. Um, RTS, uh, so RTS, CTS is off. And then I don't think the rest of the stuff matters. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna verify down here that we get the happy little uh, Christmas lights, the red and the red transmit light and the green um, receive lights. So, with all that said, we have successfully connected to the relay. It's taken us, however long, in the video to connect to the relay. Now that we're connected, we can actually start doing some work. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see we've got this little button right here that says "Read Settings from Device." Boom, easy peasy. Let's do that. It's gonna take a few minutes. Um, but it'll go. All right, so it looks like it's done downloading. Uh, one thing I like to do real quick, just poke around in here in the settings, make sure that it did actually pull all of the settings. Uh, this one looks fine, obviously. So now that we're happy with that, we need to save our settings file and we need to make a RDB file. So the RDB file is essentially a database, oh, it's a relay database file, go figure, RDB. Uh, it's a database file, which just means that it's it's essentially a folder that you store the settings files in. Now, typically you're gonna have one RDB file for uh, a given site or a given substation or a given project or something like that. So I'm gonna make a new, in this case, I'm gonna make a new RDB file and I'm just gonna save it to my desktop, make it easy. Um, so this will be, I don't know, you'd call it substation ABC relays whatever you want. So we're gonna create essentially a new folder to save our settings files in. Now I have a very uh, strict naming convention that has just been drilled into me from working for a couple different utilities over the years. Uh, so every time I'm gonna call it, um, so whatever substation this is, so substation ABC, that's what I call my RDB file. So uh, you, this could be you know warehouse one or whatever the, the actual site name is. So sub ABC, and then the uh, breaker that this controls or the circuit that this controls. So I don't know, MSB one or you know, circuit 10 or whatever it is, right? That's, that's the um, essentially the terminal, that the thing that this relay is protecting. So we've got uh, location and then the circuit and then the type of relay. So this will be SEL 751, mine's an A. And then the date. Uh, today's date is three, oops, yep, no, no slashes in the, no slashes in that. So three, uh, 30, 20, 24. And then the last two digits, I always do either AF for as found or AL for as left. This is essentially, I just downloaded these out of the relay. I haven't done anything with it yet. They're my as founds. This is exactly what was in it when I showed up. So I have some record of that. Uh, I, I take an as found before I test a relay, before I, I monkey with it, before I do anything crazy. 
and then um, if I've tested it, if I've changed any settings, if there's any possible thing that I could have done to mess with it, uh, when I'm done with that project, when I'm done testing the relay, I'll pull the settings again and save that as an as left file. So it'll be the same exact um, the same exact name up to that point, could be even the same date, and then it'll be an AL for my as left. But uh, so that's, that's my naming convention. It's the location, the circuit, the type of the relay, because some circuits, especially in substations, uh, will have multiple relays for the same circuit. You'll have a primary and a backup, transfer difference or whatever. Uh, the date, and then whether it was how I found it or how I left it, and then we'll do that. And so now what we can do is that created a RDB file on my desktop. And so like, even if we close this now, let's close that, pop open the new RDB file, which relaunches quick set. It'll take a few seconds. It's a kind of involved software. It's not really optimized to run super quick. There we go. So we'll hit open. And obviously we can select um, our RDB file here, which remember, is a database it's not the actual file inside that is the settings file if that makes sense so we could have an as found we could have an as left we could have multiple relays inside that one database file i would recommend having one rdb file for each site or each project however you want to go about that uh, and just like that we've got our settings back open um, this is exactly what I had previously saved. So there you go. That is the very basics. That's how you pull the settings. If you want to push the settings back in, again, we need to make sure that we're connected. Parameters, blah, 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 blah. All that's going to be the same. I get my happy green Christmas lights down in the bottom corner. If I want to install a settings file, make sure that you have the right one open, obviously. And then you would just hit uh, the other arrow. So we've got this, the arrow going to the paper is read settings from device. The arrow going out of the paper is send active settings. I don't know why that's the icons they chose, but there you go. Uh, and then the one interesting thing about this that I, I want to mention real quick, I know this is getting uh, a bit long winded for the short version of this um, video, but uh, we don't have to send all of the settings every time. So like if I want to send just like I only modified this one chunk of the settings and I don't want to send the rest of it. I can only send one at a time. When I hit OK, it's going to upload that to the relay. So there you go. Uh, two more things I want to mention super, super fast. Uh, we need to, OK, so we've got, well, obviously the relay does a lot of really important things. Whenever anything happens, pretty much anything at all, it's going to record what's called a, a sequential event. It is the sequence of things that happened to this relay. Uh, and that's saved as the sequential event recorder. So we go to the terminal window. The only way you can find the sequential event recorder is through the terminal window. It's the little DOS looking thing. And, or you can hit uh, control T. Control T does the same thing, opens it up. Um, we need to log into the relay using this like command prompt thing. So the commands to get in, uh, we type Again, this is going to be in all caps. ACC is the access level one, our access level one password, if it asks for it, like if we're logged out. The access level one password is otter, all caps, O-T-T-E-R, like that. Um, and then when we're logged into the first level, it'll have like the equal sign with one chevron every time we hit enter. So you keep hitting enter and it'll um, tell you what access level you're on. To go to access level two to change stuff, you hit type uh, two AC, which will go access level two. It asks for the password, all caps, T A I L like that. And there we go. Now we've got two little chevrons. It means we're in access level two. So the, uh, sequential events recorder uh, to hit that, we just type in S E R boom. And this is going to bring back a whole bunch of data because this was, I think in service at one point. Yeah. So we're a thousand, <laughs> a thousand lines deep on here. All right, so that spat out our whole sequence of events. Um, this was on a test bench for a long time, and uh, before that it was in service, and we yanked, <laughs> we yanked it out of uh, something because one of the cards on it doesn't work. Anyway, that 
is a lot of data. If you don't want to wait around to read all that, or you're only looking for stuff in a very uh, specific time window, you can also type in the command ser, I don't know, like 10, and it'll just spit out the last 10. So that's kind of cool. Or ser like 50, and it'll spit out the last 50 uh, sequential events. Super, super handy for troubleshooting, super handy for like figuring out what went on. Um, you can take a screenshot of this, or you can copy and paste uh, into a Word document that works really well too. So. That is the sequence of events recorder. If someone asks, like an engineer or a relay tech asks you for an events file, there is a separate process for that. So we're gonna go, I think it's tools, go down to events. We're gonna click on uh, get event files. And so this brings up a slightly different list than our SER. So this is events that were, uh, that triggered an oscillography, it triggered an event record. So. The SER is sort of big picture. Here's what you know. Here's what happened. The events file is uh, a little bit more detailed. So we can see we've got a few things. We've got some manually triggered events. We've got this uh, phase A 50 trip. Let's go ahead and pull this real quick, and I'll just show you the process of how to pull the event records and how to open it. Uh, I won't do any analysis in this video. That'll be for another day. So we're gonna go get selected events. So we're gonna check this box over here. We're gonna highlight the one that we want. You can download multiple at the same time. We're gonna get uh, click get select. Uh, sorry, get selected events, and then this is gonna to save to wherever you want it. Um, in my case, it's gonna to go to the desktop. Default naming usually works fine. If you want to change the name, you can check that. But I usually use default naming, assuming I'm only pulling like two or three events at a time. Okay, so that finished downloading. So we're gonna go back to our desktop and here is the .cev file. That is the event file that we just downloaded. So this is the oscillography and a, a very uh, detailed view of the actual event that the relay recorded. So this is, we've got some oscillography data. That's kind of cool. Um, engineers can analyze this. This shows the actual like digital uh, output, stuff like that. So a very, very detailed record of what was happening in the circuit at the time. I won't get into this too much. Again, I just wanted to show you guys uh, that's a thing. If someone asks you, hey, can you pull an event record file for me? That's essentially how we do it. So we have this far, I just wanna show you guys how to do that. So, all right, gentlemen, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. Again, I will go into more detail on a lot of these things in some future videos. Uh, if I left any questions unanswered, let me know down in the comments. I genuinely try and help everybody I can. Uh, please subscribe. It really does help me out. It makes my, uh, it keeps me motivated to keep making more of these videos. We'll say that. So, uh, uh, yeah, thanks. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.